what's good it's Wug. in another fight that further emphasizes saudi arabia's ability to make the impossible probable we've got anthony joshua 26 wins and three losses taking on otto valin 26 wins one loss and one no contest this Joshua versus Valin fight is seen to be the other side of the same coin that has Deontay Wilder versus Joseph Parker. And the idea is that if Anthony Joshua beats Otto Valin and Deontay Wilder beats Joseph Parker, that we could finally get that heavyweight dream match between Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder. And so when I said making the impossible probable, Saudi Arabia is just able to throw sums of money at boxing that other promoters simply can't pony up with. That's why you had that big old press conference with all the major promoters, minus, you know, Premier Boxing and Al Heyman, because nobody other than, other than those who know and work with Al Heyman really see Al Heyman. But it's a little bit surreal how much of an impact Saudi Arabia is having immediately on the boxing landscape like i'm holding out hope that if dimitri bivel beats lyndon arthur on this december 23rd undercard and if arthur better be if is able to get past callum smith that on you know one of these mega fight undercards maybe we could even get arthur better be if versus dimitri bivel and if anybody could pull it off it's the saudis and as important as Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk, the battle for Undisputed is, which is also brought to us by the Saudis, a part of Riyadh season. Anthony Joshua versus Deontay Wilder, the, the fight that this Joshua versus Valin fight is hopefully one step towards setting up. Joshua versus Wilder is the heavyweight fight, and I mentioned this on the Wilder versus Parker breakdown, but Joshua versus Wilder is the most coveted fight that we have asked for in this post Klitschko era. And so here we are, Anthony Joshua, the former two-time unified heavyweight champion, is just one of the most discussed boxers of the past, you know, 10 years, just in terms of how much scrutiny goes into not only his fights, but his mindset, like you hear so much chatter about his mental fortitude or, you know, this or that, just a lot of things that you don't always hear about with other fighters. And, you know, Anthony Joshua is going to be heading into this fight against Otto Valin with Ben Davison as his main trainer. Now, Anthony Joshua, after fighting that one fight under the tutelage of Robert Garcia, that one fight being the rematch against Alexander Usyk, one of those two back-to-back -back decision losses for Anthony Joshua that pretty much cost him that second unified champ status. Well, he had one fight with Robert Garcia after parting ways with McCracken after that first Usyk fight. So he fights Usyk the second time under the tutelage of Robert Garcia. And then he goes with Derek James for his two fights after that. The first fight against Jermaine Franklin, a decision win for Anthony Joshua. And then the second fight against Robert Hellenius, who was supposed to be, or which was supposed to be, the rematch against Dillian White. Dillian White tested positive for PEDs, then enter Robert Hellenius. And so Anthony Joshua fights that fight under the tutelage of Derek James. So Derek James has been Anthony Joshua was training for his last two fights. And in that fight against Hellenius, you know, it was a jab battle throughout the first few rounds. And Anthony Joshua was throwing that right hand from a little too far out. And it was looking like Hellenius was having success with that jab. He bloodied Joshua up a bit. And as lackluster or as problematic as some people see that performance to be for Anthony Joshua, I would just remind you that it was a short notice opponent who was way different dimensionally than Dillian White. Dillian White is about six foot four with a long reach, but he's a six four guy with a very different style than Robert Hellenius. Robert Hellenius is one of these giants, like six foot seven. And as the fight got into the middle rounds and Hellenius started to tire, wasn't moving around as well, wasn't throwing as many punches and look, was just looking like he was fatiguing a bit. You saw Anthony Joshua start getting closer and closer with that right hand. He did, in fact, catch him with it a couple times cleanly before he landed that seventh round knockout punch 
with that right hand. It was a pretty looking right hand as well. But yeah, there was a lot of scrutiny that went into the Anthony Joshua performance. But again, I would just caution you in evaluating that fight without remembering that this was a short notice opponent. So in this fight against Otto Valin, again, Anthony Joshua is going to be trained by Ben Davison. One of, I think, one of the best trainers in the sport. Like, if you see, you know, like what he's done with Lee Wood. I mean, even Devin Haney for a time was training a bit with Ben Davison. You know how Bill Haney likes to hire the services of other trainers here and there. You know, Yoel Judah, Floyd Mayweather Sr. earlier in Devin Haney's career. Well, Ben Davison was another one of those trainers that they hired to help coach up Devin Haney. So Ben Davison, who for a while was known as, you know, being the, the, the primary trainer of Tyson Fury throughout much or even most of Tyson Fury's career. Let's not forget the work that Ben Davison did with Josh Taylor. So yeah, Ben Davison is one of the best trainers in the sport. So as much as people will say, well, damn, you know, Joshua really seems to be hopping from trainer to trainer, going from McCracken to Robert Garcia to Derrick James, now to Ben Davison. You know, Anthony Joshua, I feel like his ring IQ is a little bit underrated. And because we saw him in those, you know, in that total collapse against Andy Ruiz in their first fight, by the way, another short notice opponent for Anthony Joshua, that was supposed to be Jarrell Big Baby Miller, who oddly enough is going to be on this December 23rd undercard. I probably will do a preview on Miller's upcoming fight against Daniel Dubois, but Anthony Joshua, I feel, has a, a ton of experience. Like, he's fought Alexander Usyk twice. 24 rounds with Usyk. He's been in there twice with Andy Ruiz. Let's not forget, he, you know, his king-making performance was against Vladimir Klitschko. He had won a belt earlier against Charles Martin. He fought Dillian White before that. He was in a very tough fight with Alexander Povetkin. And yes, this was an aging Povetkin. But yeah, he got bloodied up before stopping Povetkin in the seventh round. He fought, you know, former champ Joseph Parker. Joseph Parker was the first guy to take Anthony Joshua the 12-round distance. So, I mean, Joshua's been in there with a lot of A-level and, you know, elite and near-elite opponents. I mean, if you look at basically the past, what, seven, eight years of Joshua's career, it's almost been nothing but A and B+, plus, maybe B, A to B-level fighters. So, I mean, there's only so much another trainer is going to come in and it, it, it's not going to reinvent the wheel. He's going to add to his existing skill set, but I don't think it's it's a total dismantling of his foundation and a rebuilding. Like even under the tutelage of Derrick James, Derrick James just got him to, you know, further educate his jab, you know, mind his P's and Q's on defense. And then you want to, you want to re-implement some of the power punching techniques around that existing foundation. So, and I don't think Anthony Joshua's existing foundation is a bad one. I mean, people will always poke holes in different fighters' games, but I mean, everything from what we've seen from him from a skill set standpoint to his performance over performance standpoint in the ring. Yes, he might have been, you know, a little bit reluctant to throw power punches early against Robert Hellenius, and he didn't get. Jermaine Franklin out of there, but Jermaine Franklin is showing to be a pretty damn durable fighter. Jermaine Franklin fought Dillian White very evenly. Robert Hellenius is, you know, he is a guy that you could knock out. I mean, you know, Deontay Wilder knocked him out in the first round. Hellenius has been knocked out a couple times throughout his career. But yeah, Anthony Joshua, you know, put Robert Hellenius out in the seventh round after that difficult first few rounds where Joshua started to, you know, started to take more control as the rounds went on. Again, he got bloodied up, but he was winning. I would say he was edging that jab battle before he stopped Hellenius. So let's consider that. And don't forget how we completely outboxed the undertrained Andy Ruiz in that rematch. I mean, a lot of people might've thought that he would fight an aggressive fight in that rematch against Andy Ruiz. But, you know, there was a lot of reason to fight that fight on his back foot. And he won just about every round in that rematch against Andy Ruiz. And yes, Andy Ruiz was under trained, but how many guys have just totally flat out outboxed Andy Ruiz throughout his career? I mean, Andy Ruiz's only losses career-wise are against Anthony Joshua and a few years before that. Joseph Parker. Those are the only guys to beat Andy Ruiz as it stands. So as vulnerable as people like to paint Anthony Joshua as being, 
Yo, it's not like he's just getting cleaned up by guys left and right. Yes, he does have three losses, but two are to the same guy who is still undefeated in a bona fide Hall of Famer in Alexander Usyk, and then the upset loss to Andy Ruiz. So now Anthony Joshua is going to be fighting Otto Valin, who, you know, I feel is a little bit overrated. Like he did have a, a good performance in that decision loss against Tyson Fury, where he opened up a really bad cut that, yes, in fairness, if, you know, in other circumstances, that fight could have been stopped with that very, very bad cut to Tyson Fury's eye. And, you know, in Otto Valin's defense, he was... I, I thought that he was giving Fury problems early in that fight. He was quicker than Fury expected. He was hitting Fury to the body. He was the one getting off first with his southpaw style. I think that the mistake that he made against Fury was that after he opened up that vicious cut, he started to headhunt and target the eye too much where he started to abandon a lot of what was working well for him. And I feel like because of the reputation that Valine earned, in that performance against Tyson Fury, again, a decision loss, I feel like his his uh, stature is blown up a bit to where, you know, the fights that he should have been taking, I mean, he's got this, you know, great opportunity against Anthony Joshua, but that Tyson Fury fight was four years ago. The best guys that he has fought since that were Dominic Brazil and Murat Gassiev, who was a former cruiserweight champ who lost to Usyk and who then went to heavyweight, fought a bunch of lesser fighters at heavyweight cleaned them all up by knockout and then you know Otto Valin was the betting underdog against Murat Gassi of which I didn't understand and you know I don't bet on boxing often but I bet on that one because I saw that Gassi was like a substantial favorite I'm like wait a second what has Gassi done at heavyweight to be a betting favorite against Valin so I took Otto Valin to win the fight and I, I cashed out pretty handsomely I just thought that that maybe not a no-brainer but even if the odds were even, like even if this was an even, nearly 50-50 fight betting odds wise, I might have still taken Otto Valin over Marat Gassiev. But yeah, G Gassiev and Dominic Brazil are the two best guys that Otto Valin has fought in the past four years. Again, I just gave you the guys Anthony Joshua's been, been fighting. So there's really no comparison when, it when you talk about quality of opponent fight over fight over fight that will prepare you for a big matchup. And Otto Valin, again, is a southpaw, but it, I mean, Anthony Joshua just fought two competitive fights against Alexander Usyk, another southpaw. So I think Anthony Joshua is way more prepared between these two guys for this particular matchup. But, you know, when you look at the betting odds in, in this fight compared to the betting odds for Deontay Wilder versus Joseph Parker, the line here between Joshua and Valin has Joshua as a minus 360, like a three to like a three and a half to one favorite. Whereas Deontay Wilder is like a five and a half to one favorite over Joseph Parker. So the narratives between these two fights is like Deontay, it's almost a foregone conclusion that Wilder is going to stop Joseph Parker and that he's going to win that fight. And it seems like there's more question in the boxing community about who's going to win Joshua versus Otto Valin. I almost think that those perceptions are flipped. I look at Deontay Wilder versus Joseph Parker as being a much bigger question than Anthony Joshua versus Otto Valin. Now, Otto Valin is a good fighter, but he hasn't beaten those B-level guys that, you know, solidify your reputation. Like, you know, Joseph Parker has wins over Andy Ruiz, over Derek Jazora, and, you know, guys like that. Carlos Takam, you know what I mean? Junior Fa, another guy who's going to be on this December 23rd undercard. You know, guys like that. Again, Otto Valin hasn't done enough of the work, in my opinion, to beat the B-level and B minus B plus level heavyweights. Like remember when, you know, the after like the top three heavyweights, you know, Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder, you had that crop where it was like Dillian White, Joseph Parker, Luis Ortiz, Andy Ruiz, Alexander Povetkin for a long time, guys like that. You know, a little bit further down, you had Michael Hunter, right? For a moment, you had Kubrat Pulev at the end of that top 10. Well, Otto Valin, the fight that should have happened was his scheduled fight against Dillian White, where Dillian White pulled off due to a, you know, a kind of a, a scrutinized or at least a questionable injury. I'm, I'm going to give him the, the benefit of the doubt. I just think that it says a lot that after Dillian White pulled out of a fight against Otto Valin, he was blessed with that opportunity to fight for Tyson Fury's title. So it might have been a legitimate in injury, but I was really wanting to see 
how Dillian White versus Otto Valin would play out. Those are the types of fights that I think Otto Valin should have been having since that fight with Tyson Fury, right? Instead of, you know, fighting guys like Rydell Booker, Helamont Olguin, uh, Travis Kaufman, guys like that. That's who Otto Valin has been fighting. So, you know, with this Joshua versus Otto Valin matchup, like I said, I feel like those perceptions are switched because when you look at Wilder versus Parker, I feel like Parker can potentially stop Wilder. I think he can stop Wilder. Or he could win this one via decision. I know. I mean, 36 minutes is a long time to have to survive in the ring with Deontay Wilder. I get it. I get it. But to me, Wilder, I mean, he might win a very boring decision if uh, if Parker is totally tepid and reluctant to come in an exchange and is just sitting on the outside and allowing himself to get outboxed at range, long range, in the way that Deontay Wilder outboxed Bermains to Vern way back in the day. Stavern was the first guy to take Deontay Wilder the distance, but I don't see that type of fight unfolding. So if Parker doesn't fight that totally reluctant, I'll let you win a 12 round decision style. I feel like Deontay Wilder kind of has to knock Joseph Parker out or else he's going to get beaten up, right? Anthony Joshua, in my opinion, can win this in multiple ways. I think that he can knock Otto Valin out, even though Otto Valin's never been stopped. Again, he just has that one loss to Tyson Fury. Or Anthony Joshua can win via decision. I feel like because Otto Valin is a southpaw and we have seen him beat some guys via decision, Dominic Brazil, again, uh, Marat Gassiev in that split decision and fight competitively in a 12-round decision against Tyson Fury, I feel like people feel like the southpaw Otto Valin might outbox Anthony Joshua. I just don't see Valin as being the better boxer, even if he is a southpaw. I think Anthony Joshua still has more overall boxing skills. And in this fight, I think that Joshua, we might start seeing some right-hand leads from Joshua to kind of mitigate that difficulty that he could have with a southpaw. So instead of like a jab battle, which we might see a good share of jabs coming from Joshua, but I think that now would be the time to let straight right hands go against the slightly shorter, very slightly shorter Otto Valin. I'm talking like maybe 6'6 six, six versus 6'5 six, and a half. But, you know, Joshua has a few inches in reach over Otto Valin. So, yeah, you know, the right hand lead might really come into play here. And then if you mix that attack up high and low, you go to Valin's body. I think you could beat him up over the course of several rounds. And, you know, Otto Valin gases more in the second half of fights in my opinion more so than Anthony Joshua does so I I expect Joshua to at least fight evenly in the first few rounds like if Otto Valin has great success I think it's going to come in the first few rounds but even then I see Joshua boxing evenly with Valin and I see Joshua taking control in the middle to late rounds where it's going to be Otto Valin who starts to tire. It's going to be Otto Valin who's a little bit easier to find in there in the second half of the fight. Again, you might point to Anthony Joshua's losses to Alexander Usyk, but Otto Valin is not Alexander Usyk. Usyk has a set of skills that only Alexander Usyk is able to employ. He is a rare case of a Rubik's Cube of a stylistic matchup that you just don't get here with Otto Valin. So yeah, you know, I was wondering, because look, I, I feel more certain about Anthony Joshua beating Valin than I do about Wilder versus Parker. Not to say Otto Valin doesn't have a chance at winning this one. If Anthony Joshua, you know, isn't, you know, right in the head or if he's ill prepared or if he just gets caught with punches and starts getting flustered and starts panicking. Yeah, we might get Otto Valin beating Anthony Joshua like he might just storm Anthony Joshua with his southpaw style and put punches together in the way that you know Corey Sanders dusted off Vladimir Klitschko way back in the day I just think that that's very highly unlikely and I think that it's also unlikely that Otto Valin outboxes Anthony Joshua over the course of 12 rounds I don't think that this is feast or famine for Anthony Joshua in the same way that it might be feast or famine for Deontay Wilder against Joseph Parker. I think I think uh, Anthony Joshua could win rounds here, and I think that he's got a strong opportunity to stop Otto Valin. And if he does stop Otto Valin, becoming the first to do so, 
man, that would really set things up if Wilder handles business on that other end. If Joshua could stop out of Valine, that just it enhances his reputation to probably heights that he hasn't seen since before he got stopped by Andy Ruiz. This will be the probably the biggest legacy boosting, reputation boosting win for Anthony Joshua since that debacle versus Andy Ruiz in their first match. But look, at first I was going to pick Anthony Joshua via decision, unanimous decision. But I'm actually going to go with Anthony Joshua to score the stoppage over Otto Valim. I just think that he's going to get going in the middle rounds. And whatever stylistic difficulties he encounters in the first few rounds, I feel like they will more or less have it figured out by the middle and late rounds. And I think that his, his reach is going to come in handy. And once it becomes clear that Otto Valim is going to be increasingly jab heavy against Joshua, I think that Joshua is going to start getting more comfortable throwing power punches similarly to how he started throwing power punches later in the fight against Kubrat Pulev before stopping him in the ninth round. Not to say that Pulev will be as easy to find and as easy to hit with those power punches as Otto Valin. I just think that if things start increasingly going Anthony Joshua's way in the middle rounds that he will have more comfort and confidence in letting his hands go. In the way that a lot of fight fans have been wanting him to let his hands go. Otto Valin is not the punching threat that Robert Hellenius is. And I don't know if Otto Valin is as durable. Well, I mean, we'll see. He's been durable to this point as Jermaine Franklin is. But there is a strong likelihood that like Jermaine Franklin going the 12 round distance against Joshua, that Otto Valin can also go the 12 round distance. I'm just going to take Anthony Joshua to score the knockout or probably not a knockout, but a stoppage over Otto Valin, which it's a little bit tough to envision, isn't it? Just given what we have seen in recent fights from Anthony Joshua, not being the the uh, uh, the aggressive version of Anthony Joshua that he was before. We'll say before the Vladimir Klitschko fight, because, you know, the Klitschko fight got him to you know, got him to box a bit more like he did against Alexander Povetkin and against Joseph Parker, even against Carlos Takam just before that. We haven't seen that, you know, head over skis version of Anthony Joshua in like seven years. It's been a long time. And I don't expect to see that version of Joshua again. But again, if he's able to start figuring Otto Valin out, there will be opportunities for him to really put his punches together and to get the stoppage. I'm still tempted to take Joshua via decision, but I'm going to go out on a bit of a limb. I mean, it's not a huge limb, but I'm going to go out on a bit of a limb saying I'm going to go Anthony Joshua to get the maybe unexpected. I don't know how y'all feel about this, but I think I suspect that most of you are going to take Joshua via decision. Let me know if you're taking Otto Valin in this one, by the way. But yeah, I'm going to go with Anthony Joshua with the stoppage over Otto Valin. Let me know your thoughts on this one. And who do you think has a bigger chance to pull, pull off the upset between Otto Valin and Joseph Parker? Again, the betting odds suggest that Otto Valin is the liver dog between the two. But I actually think it's really Joseph Parker, especially because of the inactivity that we've seen from Deontay Wilder. He has fought one round in the past two years. And, you know, Deontay Wilder is 38 years old. Anthony Joshua is 34 years old right now so yeah let me know your thoughts on those things in the comments and what do you th make of S the saudi arabian involvement in the boxing space and do you see do you foresee them assuming bivol and better better be of win their respective fights do you think that you know they can make or will make arthur better be if versus dimitri bivol let me know your thoughts in the comments like the video subscribe to the channel if you are into the fight talk i'm woog thanks for tuning in